Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. Today it's finally time to take a look at my Commodore Amiga 1200 that I have on my bench here and uh, yeah in this video I'm gonna do a full restoration of this machine and I'm gonna replace uh, the electrolyte capacitors and also do some upgrades to it so that it uh, can be used for playing some of the best uh, games for the Amiga. <laughs> So uh, let's uh, first take a look at the machine, uh, find the status of it and uh, then we'll proceed from that. I bought this machine a while back uh, from my friend uh, Robert uh, over in Sweden and uh, yeah, it looks uh, alright but it is uh, quite dirty. It is missing two of the keys and it is missing a floppy disk drive. I haven't really tested the machine at all, I just powered it uh, on once and uh, yeah, to power it on I am going to use my own home-built Amiga power supply and uh, I made a video uh, about this a while back, you can take a look at that and see how I made this. To test the machine I'm going to use my regular uh, old modern TV and I have this um, Amiga RGB to SCART cable here. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you are a creator and need some PCBs, then you should consider PCBWay. If you visit PCBWay.com, you can get an instant quote on uh, very good quality PCBs for uh, affordable uh, prices. Besides good quality PCBs, uh, PCBWay also uh, offers CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, injection molding among other services. So head over to PCB Way and check out their services. All right, uh, let's take a look and see if it still is working. We have yellow and green light. Yeah, look at that. Kickstart ROM 3.00 Okay, the machine needs to be cleaned up. It's uh, very dirty around the edges and uh, I guess the keyboard uh, needs a little bit of retro brighting. Uh, the case itself seems to be quite a nice color, uh, no yellowing. And after that disastrous Amiga 600 recapping <laughs> story I had a while back, I said to myself, I should never recap a modern Amiga <laughs> machine again. With modern I mean the 600, the 1200 with uh, <laughs> those surface mounted uh, capacitors. Uh, however, here I am and uh, on the Amiga 1200 it is considerably easier to uh, do the recapping because the motherboard is not that uh, densely populated with components. And I have learned a few lessons since that, so hopefully it will be all right this time. Okay, I'm turning the machine off now and uh, let's take a look inside and see how it is. And uh, I have no idea how it looks inside, if it's a total mess or uh, looking good. So the goal of this video is uh, to make this Amiga 1200 uh, come back to its former glory and uh, shine again and uh, this Amiga is uh, one that I want to have as uh, my go-to Amiga machine if I want to play games or test anything. Um, I have a bunch of uh, 500s but they are all uh, somewhat uh, not working, some have expansion memory, some have nothing and uh, always if I want to test something I struggle to get them up and running. This will be the Amiga I'm gonna use. If you take a look at the backside, it looks alright, nothing is broken. 
the rubber feet are there. It is missing some screws and I can see that uh, it's not the original screws. <laughs> there are some uh, small uh, black screws and uh, yeah, these does not look right. And then you have uh, one larger metal one here. Uh, I mean metal colored. So at least two screws were missing on the case. Let's see now if we can uh, get this up. There's a little trick to release uh, the clips on this case. Uh, <laughs> okay, oh, it released. Yes, and uh, nothing is broken. That's good. Yeah, the keyboard. That's a little fragile keyboard. Uh, <laughs> flat flex cable there the keyboard connector has this uh, sliding uh, mechanism you just uh, try to pull it straight up with the shielding it's not that easy to get to it uh, yeah pull straight up and then you just pull uh, the flex cable straight up. Yeah. So what do we have here? Uh, well, we have uh, some uh, RF shielding with some uh, rust stains. We have two Kickstarter ROM chips and uh, the rest we can't see unless we remove uh, the shielding. And uh, by the judge of this Metal tabs seems like this has never been opened before. Can that be true? Yep. There's one separate uh, cover here that you also can remove, uh, probably if you want to have some, uh, yeah, expansions. So there you have it, uh, the motherboard, and it is looking uh, very good, in fact. These are the caps that I mentioned that I'm going to replace. That's probably going to be the worst uh, cap to replace. It is uh, a little bit uh, cramped in there. Yeah, rust on uh, the RF modulator box. Okay, I'm going to take a closer look at uh, the motherboard and see if I can find anything uh, nasty going on. I checked around the, the board and it uh, looks very nice. Uh, over here there's some uh, yeah, dirt and dust, a little bit more rust on uh, the metal casing uh, there. And uh, yes, and the capacitors, they don't look uh, like any have leaked. A couple of them might have some, yeah, a little bit uh, grayish. Uh, <laughs> pins but uh, yeah they look all right however these caps are known to start leaking and uh, better to replace them sooner than later so let's start with the most difficult thing and that is the, the recapping of this but first uh, i'm gonna take it out of the case obviously and for that we need to uh, yeah Unscrew all these uh, standoff uh, nuts here. If you don't have the correct bit and a screwdriver like this, you could always use a set of pliers and uh, just yeah, get them out like that. A little bit more work, but uh, that works too. Oh, there's one missing there, <laughs> but that's no problem. I have a replacement here. Lots of uh, dust and dirt. The plastic pouch I now take down to my sink and clean up in some uh, hot soapy water. And there's more uh, rust stains, so uh, I need to do something with the shieldings. I'll come back to that later on uh, how I uh, treat that rust. 
All right, let's uh, start with the recapping. And I have a kit here from uh, Amiga Store EU. It's for um, the A1200 and contains all the electrolyte capacitors that uh, I need. Before I start uh, desoldering the caps, I am taking a little bit inventory here and uh, yeah, just made a drawing of uh, all the caps and their polarity and their value and uh, checking that I got everything I need in this kit. Yes, everything seems to match except there was one extra 10 microfarad capacitor and uh, yeah, besides that I took a really good uh, picture of uh, the PCB so that I can refer to that if I <laughs> need to. I'm gonna start by removing these true hole uh, electrolytes and this time I'm not gonna rush anything. I have uh, emptied and cleaned my desoldering gun and uh, yeah hopefully this will go much better than on the A600. <laughs> the board is ready I have uh, marked where the caps are and I am gonna use a little bit of a flux on the solder just uh, to be sure that it uh, flows better when removing and uh, yeah I'm gonna show desoldering a couple of um, caps but I'm not going to show the whole process. Even these uh, regular true hole caps can be a little bit difficult to get out of these boards. So as you can see it uh, it wasn't uh, easy to get uh, two of the pins uh, out because, uh, I don't know, some thick ground plane or something prevents the solder from melting, I guess. Actually, I have discovered now that my desoldering station isn't working properly anymore. I mean, the gun handle, it's uh, leaking air. It doesn't suck uh, much through the solder tip, so I need to figure out that or to replace it. But uh, we could still use the old method with the manual solder pump. However, this, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it won't melt. I have over 400 degrees Celsius now on the solder station. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to use a little bit um, let it solder first. Yeah, I think I got some of it out, but it's uh, still not clear. Very hard to get out the solder of that uh, point there. Maybe I should have used a bigger uh, tip. So I actually took the time to uh, figure out how to fix uh, this one. I added an extra gasket uh, on the inside here so that it's tight around there. I know. Yeah. It works very good again, so just gonna add a little bit of solder to the last pin here. That's on a large uh, ground plane, I think, so very hard to, uh, to melt, but yeah, let's see. Yes! So that was a cheap fix. Instead of paying like 50 euros for a new handle, I fixed it with a 0.1 cent uh, gasket. <laughs> so that was the big caps and uh, no, it should be easy to remove them. On the A600, I actually did a mistake even with one of the large uh, true hole caps. Um, I ripped uh, a pad and a trace. I'm not gonna do that. It is loose, but it's still a little bit of... Uh, yeah, stuck down there. I'm gonna heat up that leg a little bit. <laughs> so they're out and uh, no damages. Just gonna clean up a little bit with some uh, alcohol. So what I have learned is if you have issues with the removing components that are soldered, then just take your time and uh, make sure you have good suction and good heat. 
All right, it's time to start removing uh, the SMD caps and um, there are several techniques on removing those. I have tried uh, them all and uh, yeah, you could snip them off with a set of uh, pliers or you could just rip them off, <laughs> turn them around. That's a little bit destructive. You can use uh, hot air, obviously. Or you could use a uh, soldering iron and uh, loosen it on one side first, then the other side. Uh, what I'm gonna try now is to use two soldering irons. I actually got um, a tip about that and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try that. I mean, <laughs> why not? Two must be better than one. I have this little... Uh, USB soldering iron here and uh, just trying with these two first. Now obviously it's uh, important to not heat them up too long because then you can uh, destroy the pads but uh, yeah just gonna try and uh, heat both of the pads and uh, lift it up. Yeah <laughs> I like that. Try to be not that uh, destructive here. Yep. Yeah, that seems to be a good uh, technique, obviously, if you have two soldering irons then. Okay, I'm gonna remove all uh, the caps quickly now and I'll be back when I'm uh, removing this one, which is uh, the harder one, <laughs> the hardest one. All the caps came loose pretty quickly without any problems at all. Uh, no, this last little bastard down there, it's a little bit difficult to reach um, because it's so close to the keyboard connector. You could of course remove the keyboard connector, but uh, that's uh, very difficult uh, in my mind. I tried to do that on the A600 and uh, was not easy at all. I had some captain tape around the keyboard connector just to protect it a little bit from heat. Matter of being quick here and try to... <sighs> okay. Being quick was the key word here, but... Uh... It decided to be stubborn, well, then I'm gonna be stubborn. And the solder doesn't wanna melt, so I think maybe this is a leaked uh, cap. Yes, eventually it came out and uh, the pads look good and uh, a little bit of uh, melted plastic, but uh, yeah, that's not a big deal. <laughs> All right, it's time to solder in the, the new caps and before that I'm gonna clean up uh, all the pads using a solder wick and a little bit of uh, liquid flux. Obviously it's important to clean up uh, the old solder to get a solid bond on uh, the new one. So now all the pads are cleaned up and are uh, nice and shiny and uh, I'm gonna apply a little bit of solder to each of them. You don't need a lot. <laughs> These two pads there, they were not populated by a capacitor, even if it's marked as a C460. And uh, I'm just gonna leave it. Then I clean off uh, any flux on the pads. Time to solder in the new caps, and I'm starting with the most difficult one. Take that first because if I completely destroy this uh, motherboard uh, on that first one then it's no point in uh, soldering in the rest. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure that won't happen, but um, anyway, it goes in uh, here and uh, very small one. 
Obviously it's uh, important to get the polarity correct and the caps, these kinds of caps have a black mark on the negative side. And the silk screen labeling around these caps are kind of uh, drawn out the shape as uh, the cap itself so it's quite easy to get it correctly. So for this one I need a little bit of a two hand maneuver. Just place it correctly onto the pads and uh, uh, heat up uh, one side at a time. That's uh, solid on that side and then I try to heat up the other side <laughs> and try not to destroy the cap or the pad. Just change the angle a little bit and uh, yeah, now I can hold the cap with and push it down with uh, my finger. Just turn it a little bit and uh, oh, it came loose. Okay, it wasn't soldered uh, properly on the other side. This is difficult because it's so close to that uh, damn keyboard contact, but uh, yeah, let's try. Yeah, and now this side, it's a little bit bent, uh, not the correct angle, but uh, I'm gonna adjust it. Yeah, I think it's in. Seems solid, just gonna push it down with the finger and uh, Make sure we have a good uh, solder there. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. Then the rest of the caps should be easy because there's nothing close to them that can uh, prevent the soldering. While desoldering the old caps, there were a little bit of a fish smell and that's an indication of electrolyte has leaked. Here goes the next. I just try and feel if it's loose or not, so then I push it down and uh, I'll melt the solder again. Yeah. Those are good. You could of course add a little bit extra solder if you think it's uh, not enough onto the pad. All right, all the small SMD caps are now soldered on and uh, only these are left, uh, the true hole ones. That's a quick job. Alrighty, that was all the caps done, complete, finito, and it all went well, and uh, I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> For once, everything went smooth. Okay, with the motherboard recapped, I want to test it before I do anything else, and uh, I actually also got hold of a floppy disk drive that is uh, suitable for uh, the A1200. I got this uh, from uh, someone locally here and uh, yeah, happy about that. I'm gonna hook it up and connect the keyboard and a mouse and then we can see if it actually will boot or if there's something else with this machine. Obviously I could uh, just connect a GoTech drive instead of a real floppy drive but I wanna check if this is working and uh, I actually want a real floppy in this machine. Let's see now, does it still work? Yeah, it does. However, the floppy drive does not tick. So uh, yeah, maybe I attached it uh, the wrong way. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think there was something wrong with the cable I had or uh, how I connected it. I found another floppy drive cable here and now it is ticking. <laughs> Let's check. Yeah, it reads all right. 
<laughs> well, everything seems to work. I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, cleaning and uh, lubrication, yeah, some uh, maintenance of this drive uh, in a while in this video. So if you wanna see that, then just uh, keep on watching. Then it's time to test the keyboard and it's uh, very dirty. It needs to be clean. I'm gonna do that pretty soon. Just wait and see. So this Amiga test kit has uh, memory and keyboard and floppy drive test and everything. Uh, let's uh, try the keyboard test F2. <laughs> yeah, seems to work. There's two missing keys. One of them is working at least. <laughs> well, I found some issues. Um, yeah, you can see the keys that doesn't work. Um, caps lock, for example, it uh, does not work. And the LED for the caps lock uh, does not turn on. And then we have this whole row of uh, keys from A and uh, out. Doesn't work. And um, I'm gonna try and insert the flex cable once more. Try to clean it first. A little contact cleaner in the contact. Then I have a cotton swab with a little contact cleaner and uh, just cleaning off gently. And nope, that did not work. Here's a new key. I took this from an Amiga 500. And that fits perfectly. Well, since one whole row uh, of keys are not working, then it um, indicates some break in some of the lines that goes to the computer. I tried to wiggle the cable a little bit, but it uh, doesn't work. Anyway, I'm gonna take this keyboard apart now and uh, clean it up, see if we can find out what's the problem. And uh, yeah, take it from there. It's time to do one of the most relaxing parts of these kinds of restorations, the keyboard. What's it called? ASMR. <laughs> so I just remove all the keycaps and uh, the springs so that we can clean them real good. I also think I'm gonna do uh, some recapping of uh, the keycaps. The space bar has three springs and two of those are uh, smaller, so keep those separately. And it has this uh, metal support. You need to be careful not to break off um, the fastenings for that. Push, them, uh, push the rod right backwards. All right, so a lot of dust and dirt, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. Still, that's not enough. Uh, I'm gonna unscrew the back plate so that we can uh, remove the, the whole keyboard membrane. Maybe uh, I need a new membrane. Hopefully not. It's a bit of work to remove all those, I don't know, 20 screws, but uh, I have this uh, little uh, helping tool here. Small electric screwdriver. There's a couple of small rust stains on uh, this metal. Need to take care of that, but it's uh, minimal. Okay, let's see now. Let me remove uh, the keyboard membrane and uh, I'm gonna inspect it and do some measurements on that in a bit, but now I'm gonna take all these uh, plungers out. And uh, the one that was missing is uh, this one. And uh, yeah, it's there, it's uh, broken off. So I'm just gonna keep it in case I find uh, maybe there's a 3D model I can print for that. Everything else looks all right. <laughs> 
that was kind of satisfying. <laughs> the keyboard plungers, I'm gonna rinse off. I'm gonna uh, just rinse them in some soapy water and uh, yeah, maybe that will help. Maybe some of the rubber pads are uh, oxidized or yeah, dirty somehow. Okay, everything is going down to the sink now to be cleaned. And after that, I'm gonna take a look at the membrane over there. The keyboard membrane, it looks all right. I'm just gonna clean over it a little bit with some uh, alcohol. You don't wanna rub too hard on these uh, carbon uh, <laughs> pads here. The green color is because I marked with this uh, pen here and uh, what I marked is there looks like a little um, damage or maybe a broken trace. I am gonna do some measurements here and uh, if this keyboard membrane doesn't work anymore then I will order a new one. Um, you find them on eBay but they are quite expensive. A new one will cost you around 50 to 60 euros. You even get the hard membranes for the Amiga 1200, that's uh, like a real PCB. So that row of keys starting with the A is um, here and um, I actually did measure uh, before but uh, let me show you. You see between uh, two keys uh, there's um, a line that goes through all the keys and uh, on this side as well but this one goes probably to some common and if we measure uh, between there it's around 80 90 ohms and if we measure all the way to the contact yeah there is uh, continuity at least um, the resistance varies because uh, i guess there's some carbon on these contacts as well that means there should be um, continuity from these keys to the, the contact, but um, let me try the other pad for the same key. Yeah, there's 40 ohms, so yeah. And here's the plunger, so I'm gonna test now and see if this one at least work. The thing is uh, I now need to press F2 first. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and then we have uh, A. No, that's Q. Oh, I. <laughs> oh, I see now. I did measure on the wrong row. Of course, that's the row for the ASDF, and that does not work. Then I need to measure some more. Yes, it's easy to be confused, but it's uh, this row, not this row. So it's the the pads running over here and. Um, Let's see now if we have anything on the contact. Yes. There's continuity from the lower contact and the, uh, I mean the lower pad. Let's try from the upper that's connected to that. And uh, do we have anything on the contact? No, there's nothing. So there's no continuity from uh, this pad here over to the flat flex cable contact. Okay, then we know there is some break someplace. So then I just need to measure uh, between all uh, <laughs> these pads until I find where the break is. Okay, I think I found the break. All um, the upper pads for this row of keys goes through one common here and uh, down here to that line that goes all the way up here and to pin a number two on this connector and uh, and if I follow uh, the trace I see there's some break or some yeah it looks like a corroded trace under the plastic I'll zoom in can you see it there 
I mean, I pushed the pin uh, down a little bit there and there's continuity from the keys to uh, this part, but uh, further up here there's nothing, so I guess the stuff here is um, a break in the trace. But how do we fix something like that? Hmm. I mean, uh, I could try and solder, but this is plastic and uh, yeah, <laughs> that will obviously melt. Well, that actually scraped off the whole trace because it's uh, just like some paint, it's so thin. I'm gonna try and uh, solder it with using some low melt solder, see if I can attach some wire here. Not sure if that's even possible, but um, yeah, let's try at least. And I'm just putting a little bit of flux might work all right there's uh two blobs of solder there and uh, they're sticking let me try and uh, use a little tin wire here i only have uh, like 280 degrees celsius here oops no that came loose so that solder did not stick. Okay, I think I have fixed it. I managed to solder on. I used the regular solder, but as low temperature as I could. And soldered to that point that seems to be a thicker trace. And then this little wire goes up there and connects to the trace that goes out to the contact. And uh, I actually measured now there's continuity from the keys over here and to the contact. So <laughs> I'm a little bit uh, worried about this solution, but I'm <laughs> looking forward to see if it works. But there also seems to be a break down here. So I need to fix that. That's probably some other keys. Anyway, this is just temporary. I'm gonna order a new membrane. So I made another botch wire going from there over there. And um, yeah, there seems to be a contact. This one I even didn't solder. I just placed the wire onto um, the trace and some tape over. <laughs> so very flimsy, but uh, hopefully it will work uh, temporarily. All right, let's test uh, the keybar now, see if it works any better. And as you can see, I have already cheated. I tested the A and it worked. SDF, yes. What about the lower part? No. So still an issue with uh, the lower keys, ZX CVB. Okay, so I still need to fix um, the lower row of keys. Probably connected to this uh, bodge wire here, but uh, and I had it working, but it doesn't work anymore. I made another little bodge wire because um, I found another break around here and that was probably because uh, my first fix <laughs> when I tried to solder there, it uh, Damage the neighboring uh, trace, but now I have uh, fixed that with this wire. Okay, did it improve? Yeah, yeah, the fix works, but I have to push this wire down there. And uh, yeah, that is how far I'm gonna take it with this keyboard now, because I have ordered a new membrane. But now let's take a look at uh, something else. Now I'm going to do a little bit of servicing of uh, this floppy disk drive. While it is working, it uh, probably can benefit from some cleaning and the lubrication as uh, usual. I'm not going to do anything drastic uh, with this. Just uh, open it up and yeah, clean off any dust and dirt and uh, then a little bit uh, of lubrication. Well, I said I'm gonna clean it, but it uh, seems like I don't need to because this looks absolutely clean from before and it, uh, yeah, it's spotless. <laughs> so even this um, stepper motor uh, <laughs> axle here, it looks uh, 
almost completely clean a little bit of uh, blackness it doesn't hurt to clean off uh, the heads a little bit just with some um, isopropanol finally a little bit of silicone grease on uh, the stepper motor axle here so i ran the head all the way forward and that reveals the little uh, drive rail down there just a little bit of uh, silicone grease there as well a tin layer and to all my nordic viewers uh, you find this one on Biltema. all right that was a quick and easy not much to do with uh, this drive but uh, yeah at least now it should run a little bit more smoothly uh, for the future as you saw, uh, the keyboard was missing two keys, and uh, one of the keys I took from an Amiga 500, but uh, I thought uh, while I have a 3D printer, why not print one? And this is the F10. Yeah, it looks uh, rather nice. Just gonna remove this uh, support material. So, that's the complete uh, key. I mean... <laughs> the color isn't the same and uh, yeah the surface since it's not flat completely it got a little bit uh, weird but uh, yeah I mean it will work for the broken off uh, key plunger I found two different types on the thingiverse so uh, gonna check and print uh, both of those and see uh, what is the best match for the original for the retro brightening of the keys, I'm uh, using this uh, saloon cream, which is uh, yeah, 12% H2O2, that's uh, hydrogen peroxide. And I put the keycaps in uh, these uh, vacuum bags. Then a good amount of uh, cream. Distribute it real good. Then I remove all the air from the bag using a vacuum machine. To speed things up a bit, I'm gonna place uh, the bags in the oven on 50 degrees uh, Celsius. Make sure you don't use too high temperature or you will uh, melt or warp your uh, keycaps. Then I leave them cooking for around uh, maybe two or three hours. And from time to time I will take the bags and massage them a little bit just to distribute the cream uh, better. Alright, everything cleaned up very nicely now and the keys are clean and they have been uh, retrobrighted. They look very nice. I'll take a closer look at them uh, in a bit, but for now I'm gonna assemble uh, this keyboard and uh, yeah, just gonna see if I can use it uh, temporarily until I get the new membrane. So now it's just a matter of uh, placing all these plungers. <laughs> But this is kind of boring to watch, I guess, so I just do like this. Okay, that was quick. <laughs> so that's the broken uh, plunger and I'm gonna replace it with um, this one I printed. It's, um, yeah, almost the same. Just need to transfer that uh, rubber uh, thingy over to the new one. And then place it onto the 3D printed. I should have used white uh, plastic, but um, I had black in the printer, so I went for that. Okay, let's try. Yeah, it uh, fits, but I fear that it yeah, it slides. Yeah, look. I thought it was a little bit stuck, but uh, no, this works. 
then the repaired uh, membrane looks nice then all the keycaps All right, the keyboard is uh, almost complete, looking good. And uh, there's just one key left, and that was uh, the missing one there, and uh, my 3D printed one. Fits perfectly. <laughs> but uh, hmm, it's not particularly nice looking, and uh, yeah. I could use this spare one from an Amiga 500 keyboard, but uh, then again, it's not the same color. So I'm gonna go for this. If anyone has an Amiga 1200 keyboard with a gray F10 key that they wanna sell me, then please contact me in uh, the description below the video. And for the result of the retro writing, I think this looks absolutely uh, fantastic. The case came out really nice now after being cleaned and uh, all the black marks and everything is gone. And uh, yeah, the next thing then is this metal. <laughs> and uh, you see there's a few rust stains. Uh, actually, there's a lot of rust stains here. So I'm gonna file uh, that off with uh, the Dremel, I think, and then try and uh, use some chemicals. Yeah, that went pretty good, uh, but there's a lot of dust generated from this. So I'm gonna take this outside, then I'll be back with the result. That looks uh, much better, no more rust, but uh, I'm gonna clean off the whole thing and uh, yeah. Then I'm just gonna use a little WD-40 all over to protect it. I think the only way to 100% uh, guarantee to stop the corrosion forever is to completely sand it down and then uh, paint it with primer and some metal paint afterwards. But I think that's way too much uh, <laughs> work. I. <laughs> I don't think this will rust anymore <laughs> anytime soon and uh, with a little uh, rust protectant like WD-40 I'm pretty sure it will stay like this for many many years. Oh and I almost forgot to uh, <laughs> remove the rust of uh, the little RF modulator uh, box lid. Okay, I'm almost ready to assemble the machine now and start testing it a little bit. But the final uh, thing to do here is to clean off uh, the motherboard. I'm gonna clean all the contacts with some contact cleaner. Then I'm gonna clean uh, off the PCB itself with uh, some uh, alcohol and uh, yeah, it's not dirty but uh, I like to go over it uh, with uh, cotton swabs and a little bit of uh, alcohol just to clean up the dust and any oxidation that might be there. The screws uh, for holding the motherboard uh, was in fact missing and I also missed the screw for um, the floppy disk drive and uh, I actually got the complete set here, so new screws. In goes the new floppy drive. Those screws are not magnetic, that's uh, a little bit annoying.
the machine is fully assembled. I didn't uh, put in all the screws. I'm gonna open this machine uh, several times. I mean, I'm gonna install um, the keyboard membrane when it comes and also some other stuff. Does it still work? <laughs> yep. Let's run a little memory test. Nope, the keyboard doesn't work. Damn. I reinserted the, the keyboard cable and now it seems to work. Test all memory. Yep, all two megabytes of memory was correctly checked. One thing I didn't check on this machine yet is the audio. Yeah. All four channels. Nice. The keyboard. Okay, the lower row doesn't work. Well, I'm not gonna do anything with that. It's still possible to use this machine at least and test a little bit with it until I get a new uh, membrane. And the mouse is working, but it's a uh, pretty poor <laughs> mouse mat here. It's too slippery. All right, so I would say this machine is working 100% and it's now time to do a little bit of upgrading. Just gonna test a little bit uh, FA18 Interceptor.